Hey guys, welcome to a new video. Today, a special video about Broadville E. In detail, Broadville E deleting. So you probably think Broadville E is soldered and I can confirm it's soldered. Still, you can delete the CPU. It's the same with Haswell E. Uh, you probably know my Deletimate, which I invented over half a year ago and the tool was made for deleting normal CPUs like Haswell and um, uh, Skylake CPUs and now you can see the Deletimate Extreme. This time it's a little bit bigger and it's made out of aluminium and you can also see it's made for Broadwell E and Haswell E. I already tested the tool last week with the 5960X uh, Core i7 Haswell E CPU. So let's take a look at this one first. Here is a picture of the Haswell E CPU sitting inside the Dealer Diamate Extreme. And now you can see a picture after deleting. So you can see there is the heat spreader on the left with a indium solder preform on it. And on the right you can see the, the CPU. And afterwards I removed the indium solder with a sharp knife and replaced it with liquid metal, which you can see on this picture. So why would you uh, replace indium with liquid metal? The, the reason is that the indium is quite thick. So it has a quite good thermal conductivity of around 83. Copper has about 400. So the problem is that it's around one millimeter thick. So if you remove this uh, sheet of indium, uh, you can replace it with liquid metal, for example, uh, thermal grizzly conductor out and the resulting thickness should be around 0.1 millimeter. So obviously it's a lot uh, better in performance. Um, here's a screenshot I took with a 5960X before deleting and you can see the temperature was quite high. Uh, of course it was not the best cooling solution, it was just a Polymatech Mega Hallems uh, CPU cooler, so it's just air cooled. And this is a picture, a screenshot I took after deleting and replacing the Indium uh, solder with some liquid metal and you can see the, perf uh, the temperature dropped by around 8 to 10, 10 degrees which is actually pretty pretty good. I personally uh, it was just a try and I didn't expect to gain 10 degrees which is I think pretty massive considering that the CPU is already soldered. Um, so yeah uh, this is the Core as the new Broadwell E, the Core i7 um, 6950X 10 core around 1.5 K USD and this is uh, successfully deleted uh, Core i7-6950X 10 core CPU and uh, yeah the problem is I don't have unlimited CPUs at the moment so uh, we will just use the footage I took from the German tutorial and I will just uh, explain once again what I did there so let's take a look at this. So take the CPU and place it inside the socket which supports Broadville E and Haswell E. And you can see there is a triangle on the corner which shows how to put the CPU in for the first movement. So take the slider and place it in front of the CPU and place the top part above it. Now use the main screw and just screw it, uh, screw it in a little bit and take the hex screws to uh, fix the top part above the socket. Now you can see there is a window in the tool which is useful to take a look at the CPU during deleting because it's very important that you don't push the IHS too far otherwise you might damage your CPU. Um, I recommend to don't push further than one millimeter. So first of all just screw the main screw totally in until you can feel that there is some pressure building up. Once you can feel the pressure building up, make sure you turn really really careful and slow and always keep an eye at the window. So you should not turn further than uh, one millimeter, I mean uh, the IHS should not move further, further than one millimeter, otherwise uh, it could be that you damage your CPU. Now after um, you could see that it moved about around one millimeter, uh, use the hex key again and uh, loosen the screws to remove the top part. So take off the slider 
And now you can already take a look at the first step of the lidding process. You can see that the glue is visible underneath the IHS. This means the glue got loose, but the CPU is still soldered. It's still hard to remove the IHS. So what you have to do is take the CPU again, place it in the other direction and place the slider again behind the CPU and mount the top part again. So we will now push another millimeter just in the other direction. It's exactly the same pr procedure. Uh, always make sure to check the process in the window so you don't damage your CPU. But the thing is on the second push you will notice that it's very very easy to uh, delete the CPU because the IHS usually comes loose after less than one millimeter of pushing. So take the hex key again and unmount the screws and now we will take a look at the perfectly deleted Broadwell eCPU. It could be that you still have to turn it a little bit to left and right uh, just because of the glue which is still a little bit adhesive but once you got that going you can see you can take off the IHS re really really easy. And now you can um, take a look at the I IHS already and also the CPU and you can see everything is still in one piece. So this is the CPU, the deleted um, Core i7-6950X and you can see that there is still the glue around the top uh, PCB and the middle is covered with a indium solder and there is a little bit of residue around it, it's probably something which is left from the soldering process. So let's take a, l a closer look at the IHS and you can see there is a yellow part in the middle which is actually um, very thin gold plating. The gold plating is necessary to make sure that the indium sticks very well to the, to the um, IHS. Otherwise if you would only have the indium directly on the nickel it would usually get loose after a few thermal cycles. So now we will have to remove um, the rest of the solder and we just do this by using a knife, a very sharp one preferably. So place the CPU back in the socket which should make it easier to handle and use um, the knife to cut the, in the rest of the indium off the chip. You don't have to be too careful because actually the circuit is on the back of what we see. So even if there is a small scratch in the chip on top, it won't damage the CPU. Just be careful not to cut off any surrounding parts like uh, resistors or capacitors. So take the CPU back out of the socket, clean it from the rest and you can see that it's very easy to get rid of the indium and it looks pretty good. Um, you don't have to get rid of all the residues, it's already fine like this. And now we take the IHS and also remove the solder there. You can actually cut off the um, whole solder within one piece. So just be careful, take your time and then it should be really easy to cut off the rest of the indium from the IHS. Here you can see the progress already and that it's going off in one part which is around one, one millimeter thick I think. So you can see it went off in one piece, almost there were only a few bits left so just use the knife again, sc scratch several times over the surface just to make sure you got all the indium off the IHS. Now we have to remove the glue though 
because otherwise the, um, the glue would prevent the IHS from having a very good contact with the CPU. Because usually, I mean, the solder preform is around one millimeter thick or half millimeter, I'm not really sure on Valvilli. So if you don't remove the glue, the IHS will not have a direct and good contact to the chip and it will result in really, really bad temperatures. So take your time and make sure you completely remove everything of the glue. You can take your fingernail for this or any like a plastic card, but make sure you don't use anything sharp on the CPU. Otherwise, you really risk to cut into the PCB and damage the chip. So now I only removed the outer parts of the glue and I uh, rechecked how it feels and you can feel that the IHS is kind of still stuck if you put it on top so probably the glue from the middle PCB is still in really good contact with IHS this means we have to remove the rest of the glue of the middle PCB as well. This is how the CPU looks like after cleaning. For sure you can still see a bit of the glue but it's still good because um, you can feel that the IHS has a good and direct contact to the chip already. Now use the liquid metal, place the CPU in the socket again just for easier handling and place a really small drop on the chip and we will spread it with a cotton swab. Then we do basically the same for our IHS, again place a very small drop in the middle of the IHS and spread it again with a cotton swab. So this is a screenshot I took before deleting the CPU. You can see I ran Prime95 for around 5 minutes. Uh, I used Prime95 without AVX load because it's just causing an enormous heat for Broadwell E CPUs. You can see I clocked the Broadwell E, the Core i7 to 4 GHz and I used a core voltage of 1.25 volt. You can also see in the screenshot that the max temperature was 86 degree and the maximum average temperature was around 79 degrees. So let's take a look at this screenshot, which I took after the leading. Now you can see the settings are the same, still 4 GHz at the same voltage, also same Prime95 prime setting. And you can see the maximum temperature dropped to 80 degree, while the average maximum temperature dropped to 75.6 degree. This means the maximum temperature was lowered by 6 degree, and the average temperature lowered by around 4 degrees Celsius. Actually, I have to admit that I expected more from this, um, especially considering the effort I put into this and I think it's more, more should be possible if I send the IHS because I think the contact is not perfect between die and IHS. So here's a picture of a IHS I took um, after sanding uh, the corners and I hope I can get more and better results after, uh, out of this after um, sending. So I will keep you updated on this. Unfortunately, I didn't have time before the release to test more with the sanded IHS, but I will surely, ke surely keep you updated on this topic. I hope uh, you enjoyed the video and also um, the information you got from uh, deleting a solar CPU. If yes, maybe leave a thumbs up on the video and subscribe to my channel. Thanks.